to that. But no record can be broken without the timekeepers. They can clock a race to within a thousandth of a second. Just imagine that, one thousandth of a second. And they can measure a jump or a throw to within a fraction of a millimeter. You name it, they know it. But how do they know like this? Top athletes perform at the very edge of human ability. The difference between getting the gold or silver medal can be a mere fraction of a second. But nowadays, no matter how tight the finish, the judges always know exactly who the true winner is. So how do they do that? Well, every athlete's performance is monitored not by the human eye, but by astonishingly accurate electronic instruments. The beauty of sophisticated timing is uh, it gives you the proof. For me, timing has, 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 has saved me. It's been the difference between a, a, a silver medal and a bronze medal. Black is second. In 1991, I was world silver medalist by a hundredth of a second, which is nothing, absolutely nothing. It's not even that. I mean, you can hardly see it. We are not the judges. We can provide the raw data to the judges in an athletics competition to enable them to make the correct judgment. The old system relied on the human eye to pick the winners, backed up by a bank of stopwatches. It just wasn't reliable. For example, at the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics, a newspaper photograph published the following day showed that a man declared the winner had really come third. But the old system really came to an end with another mistake at the Rome Olympics of 1960. Here the judges didn't even trust the clock and gave a silver medal to this man, although he had a faster time than the winner. So, to get rid of human error, precision timing systems became official. But at first, even they couldn't always spot a winner. Here in 1984, Olympic history was made when these two American swimmers finished in a dead heat. They were a thousandth of a second apart, but it was decided that timing should stay at a hundredth of a second, so both were given gold. And that one hundredth of a second gave Donovan Bailey a new world record at Atlanta. The old record, 9.85 seconds. But the modern system proved that he had clipped that by just a hundredth of a second. Timing becomes more and more important as world records become harder and harder to beat. And if you take the sprint events, like the 100 metres, a world record is now beaten by a hundredth of a second. A hundredth of a second to, to measure a hundredth of a second is, is incredible. Human reflexes are far too slow to operate a stopwatch with that kind of precision. So, nowadays, every runner in every race is electronically timed from start to finish. So how do they do that? It all begins with the starting gun. This is a transducer. It turns the bang of the gun into an electronic signal which is amplified through these speakers. All the athletes hear it at the same time because even a fraction of a second's difference in hearing could turn gold into silver. And when a runner starts before the others, like Linford Christie did in Atlanta, the judges know immediately. Well, I wonder, I'm not sure it may be only a fraction of a second, but the system shows who the culprit is. How? As the athletes take their marks, they put pressure onto sensors in the starting blocks which are connected to a computer. If this pressure drops before the gun goes off, it's a false start. But it can also be a false start even if a runner starts the after the gun, Christy as Christie found out in his second attempt. The rule is that an athlete's reaction time should be at least one-tenth well, of a second Christy, after the gun. The defending champion looks like being thrown out for two false starts. We are able to analyse the reaction time of the athletes to a precision of one thousandth of a second. So there is no doubt that the result is correct. He's been thrown out of the final for two false starts. If the start's important, how about the finish? Well, the system can even sort out the exact order in a crowded finish like this. Without timing, you would have probably said, oh, they're all winners. You, you couldn't differentiate. But you have to be able to differentiate, and without timing, you can't do that. The state-of-the-art system that Tim Coleman and his team supplied for Atlanta showed not only the position, but also the time of every athlete as they crossed the line. In this race, only one hundredth of a second separated gold and silver, but the system flashes up the result immediately. Hard. Well, as the gunshot sets the runners off, it also switches on a computer, which times the race and is linked to a camera on the finish line. As the athletes cross the line, an infrared sensor triggers the camera to photograph the finish line every two thousandth of a second. Each picture it takes is one millimeter wide. 
These thin slices of time are then put back together in the computer to make up the photo finish. The question that's very regularly asked is which part of the photo finish image is the finish line? And the answer, although it may appear bizarre, is all of it is the finish line. Not before, not after. The whole image is the finish line built up in slices of time. A red line is then put against the chest of each runner to mark their exact position and timing. As athletes become faster and faster, then we rely more and more heavily on sophisticated timing. Roger Black. Roger Black. The real stars are the men and women down on the track. Our job is to provide precise information so that one of them knows that when he or she has won, that they're It's still not known 